Horn. We just open up about five minutes early. We got a, about seven people in already. Morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. All right. We got about five minutes, huh? All right. The music is waiting for everybody to check in. Morning, John. Listen to a little music, you know, getting ready. Good Got morning. One All right, well, <laughs> I like that one. Uh, let's get started. Um, you know, today, 
we, I actually selected some actually outstanding videos that we're going to be breaking down. Uh, but before we move to that, I actually got Croatia and Japan, because today we're going to look into not only we've talked about the press, press going to a zone, but now we need to talk a little bit about the zone going into the counter. And the Japanese, I, for, for you guys that are not uh, familiar with it, they have a completely different style of play, okay? And in the last four to five years, they have been able to have significant results. I mean, they have beaten the U.S. three or four times. They have beaten Montenegro. They have beaten Serbia. Um, so they seem to do very well against the teams, particularly the teams that are a little bit static. They don't seem to do as well against Spain and Italy, uh, but they seem to do pretty well against the teams that play kind of heavy, and that's because the style of play. Uh, the second game I, I actually got it, it's a, a women's game that is, I think it was one of the best games I saw, and that was Hungary and Holland. Because again, you have two distinctive styles. So you got the Hungarians that actually are great outside shooters on the women's side, players like Kistelecki, uh, you know, that can really shoot the ball well. Uh, they play a, a very kind of an open style. And then you have the Dutch team that actually play very much of a man's style. I mean, they play for the center. They do the drives. I mean, they, they you know, one of the most obviously traditional women's programs. I mean, back in the 70s, uh, the only programs that were around, there were really no Europeans with the exception of uh, Holland. In the 70s and 80s, it was basically just Holland, Australia, USA, New Zealand. They were pretty much the teams that actually had women's water polo. As women's water polo was an exhibition match in 84, you know, then Hungary, Italy, and some of the other teams started to join. I'm sorry I forgot Canada, but Canada was actually a very important part of that growth. Um, and so, um, so Holland's a very old team, and they, they play this very, you know, uh, particular style. They have great outside shooters. Traditionally, they won the gold medal in 2008. Uh, they – a lot of tradition. And then the last game I got is that I think it's, it's a matchup that – presents for you guys i'm telling you right now if i was to take a high school or college team right now i would definitely take a combination of an italian and greece tactics i mean italy and greece are getting the most out of their athletes as far as i'm concerned they both teams don't have guys they're you know six foot eight six foot nine uh both teams don't have this monstrous and the most of those teams have this fifty thousand players like we have in us and some of the other places but they seem to be very tactically sound. I mean, Greece pretty much manages every second of every offense and every defense. Italy has a very precise game. Uh, Coach Campagna has done an absolute great job on uh, making sure that the team knows his tactics, knows his limitations, and they just play. Um, I love watching him on the bench when he just say, it's okay, continue to play. You know, we do not want to overreact. So three great videos we're going to be watching in a little bit. But let's talk a little bit about, um, you know, one of the things I've always taught my own kids, but I talk my own players, anybody that plays for me knows that, that I, I really like to do is uh, you need to understand why things happen, you know. So you can't just all of a sudden say, well, you know, uh, well, you know, we do this. No, it doesn't really work that way. Um, what we – what we want to do is see why it got that way. So let's look at a little bit of the historical part of the counterattack. You know, so the Olympic Games is actually divided into five categories. You have between 1900, when it was the first team sport added to the Olympics, to about 1912, before World War I, that the game was going through a lot of changes. The United States had a different way to play. Scotland had one set of rules. England had a set of rules. Um, it was kind of a mess. You know, uh, with some teams like in 1912, not even anybody showing up. It was four American teams. So we took first, second, third, and fourth. It was like St. Louis, New York, Chicago, and that pretty much who competed. Uh, but most of the teams in that era were Scotland, Belgium, France, England. Those are the teams that were there. Uh, World War One, of course, happened. You know, the bubonic, not the bubonic, but the Spanish flu happened, killed about 40 million people. And then after that, we came back to the 1920 Olympics. It was a very important Olympics because it was kind of the first time the world was kind of like coming back with that idea. So from about 20 to 36, a lot of innovations, a lot of innovations. Between 20, 24, and 28, still total domination in the swimming game. 
Uh, players do not pass the ball hand to hand. The balls were always passed water to water. Uh, so when you pass, you pass through the water. The person swam from the water. From the water, would either take a hook shot or some kind of a push shot because the ball was leather. And after that first period, you know, the ball was about six pounds. You know, and what? Not many people could actually shoot the ball in those days. Um, and so that went on, and again, continue with Scotland, Sweden, Belgium, England, United States actually pick up a medal in 28. Um, so, yeah, pretty much the game didn't change much. And then in 28, a guy named uh, Bela Komiari from, Russia, from uh, Hungary had a brilliant idea. Why not pass the ball hand-to-hand? That was called a dry pass. And instead of doing that, players would swim on their own, catch the ball with their hands, and then either direct the ball into the goal, misdirect the ball into the goal. and uh, it was innovative. By 32 and 36, both Germany and Hungary were outstanding teams, and they started to come into the medal round. Some teams like Belgium, Sweden, some of those teams start kind of fall by the wayside. The game became a little more physical. Um, and then basically Hungary and all that, Eastern European countries just started to really become uh, a, a strong force into the game. Beautiful. Again, just when the game is starting to surface, well, you know, things are going great. And, of course, we got another world war. You know, so we got the World War II, you know, all this stuff happens for about 12 years. The whole world is in flame. Uh, come back in 48 in London, we bring it back. Very kind of a mild Olympic Games, hungry wins, but not so many people. People are still pretty hurting because of the war. We move on, 52 huge games. Now 52, 56, 60, 64, you know, from about 1948 to about um, – excuse me, about 1960, the game really started to change. You got the Yugoslavs that created kind of the first idea of, let's say, be more defensive oriented. Don't worry so much about the offense. That was in 52 with Krivo Kapic. And then you have the, basically the Hungarians that in 56, when after the Russian invasion or Soviet Union invasion of their country, were not allowed to train or not allowed to swim very much. So they couldn't really press as everybody did in those days. So they came up with a zone. So that was really the first time you started to see a very active zone into the game, a planned zone. Uh, so the, the Hungarian, there was that huge blood game between Soviet and Hungary. It was not basically created a different way, a zone. Okay. Again, the game was still being played pretty static. It was like two on the defense, two in the middle, and kind of two on offense. So, at the most, you would go with four guys on offense. Two guys always stayed back on defense. There were no shot clock. Um, it, it was actually a pretty static game. By 1960, the Olympics moves into Italy. Italy creates the counterattack. Basically, what Italy does say, why don't we move? Why do we have to stay here? We're not as big as these guys, but we're fast. So Italy creates this huge movement game where guys from the back, kind of like Brazil with soccer with the overlapping from the, you know, the fullbacks, you know, they basically start running up and down the pool. You know, they're swimming up and down. They create movement. They win the gold medal. Totally new thing. Okay, 64, 68, 72, 80, 84, 88. A lot of those people consider to be the golden ages of water polo. Um, there was some absolutely beautiful game. The game became very popular. Uh, women's game is starting to come around. Um, it, it really was a huge difference. But also saw the introduction of shot clock, introduction of uh, three fouls, introduction of uh, the goalie being able to throw the ball past half court, introduction of the rubber ball, the Mikasa, the Voigt, uh, Tashikata, you know, now, of course, the Cap 7. So all these things are starting to come in back in those days. And uh, so it, it really was an un unbelievable, uh, you know, growth of water polo during that time. By the time it hit the 90s, and then now we started to really experiment with the rules. The game went into a a little bit of an area that I wasn't very happy with in the sense the game became a little bit too physical, but not physical in a good way. The game became physical in a sense of, you know, maybe just a lot of grabbing, not so much of that, you know, creativity and creating and making things happen. Uh, so the game went kind of boring in my opinion. And, uh, but now. Because for a while there, people were afraid. People were afraid to make mistakes on offense because of the, the you know, the, the, the fouls or whatever. So um, it, it, people were just like, you know, um, 
people not here. Are you guys hearing me? Are everybody hearing me? Okay, more or less. Okay, some of you, some not. Okay, uh, you know, it, it, even though it's not supposed to rain in California, uh, it is <laughs> it is raining over here pretty hard. So I'm not sure if uh, something has happened, but you know, we'll we'll go on, and if, if anything happens, we'll you know we'll try to do a little bit more with voice. You know, so we'll see. What about now? Is it getting a little better? You know, I'm trying to put the volume as loud as I can. Okay. All right, good. All right, let's do that. So, so basically that's what we got, you know. So now we have this beautiful game that I think is fantastic, you know. I think it's fantastic, this new game, because basically is mobility is back, creativity is back. Uh, the game is actually being more fair, where it doesn't matter if you're 5'11", or if you're six foot five, you can play the game the same way. And I think that's wonderful. We had the, you know, the great players in the, in the 80s and 90s, people like Estiardi and Bayard and Yeti Shav and all these great, Kevin Robertson, all these guys are under six feet tall. And they were like amazing players. And, you know, like in the 90s and 2000s, they kind of disappeared. Like you didn't see anybody that was under six feet tall. Once in a while, maybe one or two. But now you're starting to come back and the driving game is back. So let's move on to what we really want to talk about. So look at our trusty board over here. Let's move a little bit, like see, so you see. Again, so the idea is when you have a press, you basically just spread the whole game, okay? That's the press, all right? So we got that, there you go. You got the press over there. And then when you go into zones, as we talked about, you got this kind of stuff. But you notice that the traditional defenses is still have a person between this and the goal. So the defense is in front of this. What has Japan do? They know that they don't have a lot of big, huge guys. They know if they try to play you on, let's just say, that push and shove game, it's not going to be successful. So what do they do? They give you the inside. They trap you. Remember what we talked about trap? What they are basically doing is making you drive. Because by all of them doing this, whenever you drive, you into somebody else's zone. Whenever you drive into somebody else's zone. He doesn't leave this man, but he is there with a guy right behind him. So you can't really arch back to take a powerful shot. You can't. There's a guy right behind you. If you bring the ball back, he's going to knock it out of your hand. So he basically stays here and make people make mistakes. Okay? So let's take a look at the first one. All right, let's just go here. All right. We got this one here. All right, let's move back. Yep. All right. Okay, hold on. Let's open up in a second. Okay, here we go. Hold on. Let's stop this for a sec. Okay. All right. Let me get rid of this because somebody said yesterday this was blocking. There you go. So here you got Croatia and Japan. So, and this is from uh, World Championships last year, okay? And Japan actually had some very good games. I mean, they've lost. They, they, they beat Brazil by a goal. They lost to Italy by a goal. They lost to Germany by a goal. Or they beat Germany by a goal. Excuse me. Beat Germany by a goal. They lost, you know. So they're right there. And, of course, with the Olympics going – into Japan as they were supposed to this year. Now we'll be next year on the 14th of July. Um, it, it, it's changed. Okay, so let's take a look in here. You watch them. When you watch Japan, you see that they will actually will give you inside. Okay, so here we go. So Japan, of course, is up right now. You know, there it is. Japan, two to one, Korea. There's Japan. Of course, they never stop moving. They make a mistake. There's a counterattack of Croatia. Okay, now watch their defense. Coach, we have Coach Kyo, or Otto is a little no, nervous. But watch on the defense what they do. They'll actually will let the guy go sometimes. They're not too worried about it. Okay, see, they'll let the guy get in front. They'll help from everywhere. And then, like I said, they'll just play for you to make a mistake. And then they are deadly on a counterattack. They will move on to the counterattack. Like, you know, they, like I said, they expect you to make mistakes. And that's the bottom line. They, they're going to play to the percentage a little bit. They're going to help from everywhere. And then when they go to offense, and this is the thing I want you to see. You know, years ago when I wanted to really have the best high school team in the country, when I was coaching at Wilson, we went on to win about nine CF titles in a row. And 
one of the things that I did is I said, you know, guys, you guys have to learn how to play defense on the drive. You guys have to learn how to move on offense. And we went to Japan. Trust me. If you guys ever want to plan a trip, go to Japan if you want to really learn how to guard the drive because these guys never stop. Watch this. Their offense basically works this way. They will always get the ball here. Okay? Coach, trust me, I was coaching in China for five years, and I played these guys more than 40 times. So they have this guy here. Their center is not that important. They just kind of seal the defender. And then everything is going to happen in this area right here. All the drives, they'll try to get inside water, try to get you excluded. Look, they're man up on the counterattack because they're fast. So watch what happens. There he goes. They're going to drive. There's the man, you know. And they're not afraid to shoot the ball. Let me tell you this. People say, well, Rico, I mean, did they? No, no. They will shoot the ball from anywhere. And they are good shooters. They have some of the best shooters around. Okay? And they will shoot the ball. Okay? All right? So here we go again. There he goes on the drive. They get inside the water on the drive. There you go. Come up with a shot. They, one of the things that I really like about the Jap Japanese team, before I show this thing again, and this is something I try to teach, don't wait for the foul. Stop waiting for the foul. Okay? Go and try to create your shot. Everybody's always trying to wait for the foul, you know, on the up to make a pass, wait for the foul. Don't wait for the foul. Explode. Okay? Explode into that person. All right, here we go. The line, you know, the, you see the slow-mo. I'm going to show a little slow-mo here. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Inaba Yusuki, he's good. Then I'm going to show the slow-mo. Come on, you always do. There you go. See, he doesn't wait. You know, he's waiting. This guy, he's not going to wait. He's going to shoot the ball. See, the goalie thinks that he's going to wait for the foul. Everybody's waiting, and all of a sudden, nothing happens, okay? All right, let's take a look at the Hungarian-Holland game. Okay. Now, these are two very different style of ball, style of a ball teams. Okay, so let's watch the beginning right off the bat. You know, when they come in, uh, sometimes I like to watch that first possession just to set up. Here they go. Okay, this is from European Championships. Hungary was fourth in the last Olympic Games. Had a change of coach right in the beginning. So, again, watch. See, this is what I was trying to tell you before. You see that defense? So, what Holland did, you notice that they picked them up on top. So, kind of push the offense. Look where these girls are. I mean, if you look at this being, you know, six meters right here, right? This is five, this is six, right? So, look at this. They're way out here, right? They're way out here, you know? So, then once – the hole established, okay? So you see the moment that this whole man established right here, see they come back on a two, three, four, okay? Very much of a man style defense, okay? Here we go, two, three, four. Now they start passing the ball around. There's that drive, right? They love that drive that comes over here, clears it up, outside shot, knocked it down. Here goes in a counter attack, all right? Boom. Okay, good job. Now, there goes Holland. Okay, again, Hungary has picked them up. Very heavy press. Okay, heavy, heavy press. There goes Holland. Again, don't expect the foul. There it is. There goes Hungary. I'm sorry. There goes Hungary in the breakaway. They're very offensive. You know, they're going to take the, the, the situation to get a penalty shot here or an ejection that looks like the penalty shot is called. Because that's one of the – calls that, that right now are being debated, but the best thing to think about is that don't let yourself get caught, okay? Of course, taking a shot's going to be Kistalecki, one of the best shooters in the world. Um, she does a great job, excellent shooter. Uh, there she goes, Rita, she's going to take the shot. There he goes, comes up big and puts the shot away, okay? So let's stop for a second here, guys. Um, it, you know, think about it this way. You, you have a situation that you can be aggressive and you got to push your zone. Your defense has to create something for your offense. This is where sometimes people don't understand. You know, you have to make sure to say, if you just set up the defense to stop the other team, okay. But then the game is going to end 0-0. Zero, zero. What you want to do is have a defense that's aggressive. So you want to have a defense that not only stops the other team, but then goes on 
to, let's say, put the pressure on the other team and really taking him down. You know, so a counterattack is the best way to do that. Okay, the counterattack is the best way to do that. Let's go back to our board here for just a second. Okay, let's go back to our board here for just a second. Let's stop the share. All right, let's take a look at our board here again. So if, if I want to do like the Japan, what is Japan's idea? First of all, let's discuss Japan. So Japan is going to basically say, hey, I'm going to help from everywhere. I'm going to help from here. I'm going to help from here. I'm going to let this guy go and be behind. What they're doing is creating mini zones. So they're creating mini zones all over the place. The reason that is very difficult is because most teams are not used to playing that way. You know, so if you play against Japan 50 times, then that defense was not going to be effective. But it, most of the time what you're doing is you're playing at a very pattern way that we play, particularly Europeans. The European plays a very pattern water polo. It's very good. They're outstanding, but it's pattern. You know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to come into the center. They're going to drive from four. They're going to drive from two. They're going to work with it. You know, so it's pattern. So now all of a sudden you got these guys over here that they are basically putting all over the place. They're moving all over the place. They're leaving on the counter. They counter six with six. They tire you out. By the time you get to the fourth quarter, you're dead. You're absolutely dead. Let me take a look at this one question over here. Um... Okay, we like to tell uh, good, 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 good. Okay, now, good, two, two great questions that I'd like to address right now. And that is, first of all, I love high, high lane presses, okay? I really do. I really love when you sit over here and you can really press the other team high. You know, you don't, you're fronting and everything. But again, is what I said to you yesterday. The problem with the high press lane is that look at the difference that you are from here. So you better have some kind of a trap because it's not like in the old days, like back in the 80s, when you couldn't shoot off a free throw and the goalie would come out. But you can't do that anymore. We all know that. Okay? So that means now you, he can't come out because even if you get fouled, you're going to throw the ball in an empty cage. So now if you're this far, that means you're outside the six, six and a half, you're not going to come back in time. And if this guy gets position, it's going to be an exclusion. It's going to be an exclusion. It's that simple. So you have to make sure you have a trap that understands that, yes, you're laning press real hard when the ball is here, but with the idea that the moment that this guy loses position, you have to have your trigger. So your trigger can be a quick, four, you know, three, four. Quick, quick. I mean, i got to be quick. And this is why it's so important that you work on your swivel hips. You have to be able to go from this position to this position on a split second. On a split second. You have to. Okay? And, and, and a lot of people don't do that. Because the second question I was asked, you know, besides this part of the lane high. So I, lo I love the lane high too, but be careful. Anything outside six and a half, seven. It, it, it's going to be tough. Unless, of course, you have a great two-meter guard that pushes the guy to five meter. But that, you know, like I said, you should always train and practice to play against the best. It's easy to play against guys that are not very good. Okay. Um, but the second question was asked is about speed, you know, about swimming. Remember, counterattack has nothing to do with swimming. You, you must understand that. Counterattack has nothing to do with swimming. Let me explain. Oh, does that mean we don't have to swim? Absolutely not. You have to swim. But that doesn't mean you have a good counterattack. You know, you could have, I mean, if I put in, uh, you know, Nate, Nathan and Adrian and, and uh, you, you know, uh, whatever, Michael Phelps and, uh, you know, Cielo from Brazil, the, the fastest 50s out there, the fast hunters out there, I guarantee you they're not going to get open on a the counter. They're not. Because counterattack is about anticipation, position, and rough swim. Because most of the time on a counterattack, you will be touched with somebody. You will understand position, meaning that you know that you have to either go one way or the other. You can't just look in a straight line. The worst counterattacks is this one right here. When you just swim like this, that's not a counterattack. That's just swimming. A good counterattack is when I say, I want to get rid of this guy. Let's say I got in front of him. I'm going to get rid of this guy. So instead of doing this, where he's just going to be behind me the whole way, now, what I'm going to do is the moment I get here, maybe I'll take a quick stroke that way just to make them change a little bit, and then I'll explode in an angle 
Well, I'll be able to get that fast in a long way. So understanding your angles is extremely important. Anticipation. It doesn't mean leaving early. Okay, don't leave early. You play, if it's a 30-second shot clock, you play 31 seconds of defense. Don't leave early. I don't like leaving early. Play 31 seconds of defense. But anticipate. When that ball leaves that guy's hand, you're gone. Don't wait until the ball arrives where it's supposed to go because the clock's already expired. One of the things that I watch when I evaluate teams, I see sometimes I look at it, and the guy actually see a guy dumping the ball in the corner, and the, the player looks at it and goes like, ooh, look at that. It's being dumped. Ooh, look at that. It landed almost on a two-meter line. Wow. Ooh. You know, in the meantime, you could have gone to Divas. You could have gone to your offense. You got a counter. All right, let's take a quick look at the last one. We're going to go a few minutes over. I don't care. I like talking to you guys. All right, here we go. Let's go to the Italy-Greece game. I love this team, guys. I mean, wait. You guys can see it? Hold on. Maybe I did something wrong. Hold on. Hey, let me go back here for a second. No. Here. Okay. Did you guys did you guys see it when I put it up or not? No? Okay. I uh, probably got to screw that. Yeah, dark. Still getting better, guys. Still getting good. It's getting good. It's getting good. Here we go. All right. Now you can see it. Okay. All right. Let's look at the big one. This is actually, I think, if you if you actually want to watch uh, and, and really help your team, have these two teams look at each other. I mean, these teams, when you look at it, when you break down the talent and, you know, their size and everything else, I mean, they are outstanding. I really like, I think both of them are well coached. Both of them have great tactics. So here we go. You know, I see a lot of help from everywhere. There they're going, like, look at the counterattack. Look at this guy. I mean, come on. This is beautiful. Every single person is swimming in this pool. Look at this. There's nobody stopping. The guy stopped. Look at it. He stops at the seven meters, and everybody's still swimming. Look at this. Okay, let's stop here for a second. Here, stop here. Look. Look at this. Everybody moved up. Everybody. Look at this thing. Every single person is inside the six-meter line. Look at this. Look at this. This is a counterattack. Imagine how much, how much pressure you are putting on the other team, all right? Imagine how much pressure you're putting on the other team. All right, here we go. What happened here? Uh, yeah, go back there. I don't want to see this. I'll go back. Okay? So, so you shot the ball. Boom. Beautiful shot. Dolungo, you know, it, it makes the save. There's that counterattack. Hey, breakaway counterattack. All right, here we go. Put the ball away. They are always aware. What I like about it, the Italian team and the Greek team is that they're always aware of everything that's going on. Let's take a look a little further ahead. Remember what I was saying about right here? Okay. I don't know what this thing is here for. All right. Hold on. Uh, I'll probably press something stupid. All right. Here we go. Let's go back to that. All right. All right. Okay. Again, look at the press. A lot of fronting, a very physical game, very physical. Again, a steal. Again, we go on a counterattack. There he goes again. Everybody is swimming hard. That's Fondelli. He played for me since he was about 11 years old. Um, everybody's on a counterattack. Everybody's going. He got the ball. But everybody is swimming. Nobody is stopping. This is one of the things that makes it for a great counterattack. But the defense is the one that creates all this. There he goes, moving around. You know, he makes the pass. There's the ball right there. You know, so look look at the situation right here. Look at that. Look at this. So I got, he goes in, there goes the ball. Yeah. Here we go. See that everybody collapsing, okay? But everybody's spread out. This is what I like about it. This is what I like about it. All right, let's go back here for a second. Stop. All right. Let's go. Oops. Okay, hold on. Stop sharing. I want to go back and show you one more thing. I'm going to put together really quick for you guys. Okay, it's to understand why those two teams are so good. Is that, you know, 
you sit over there and you, you know, right now, yeah, the full view had a great year last year. He's probably the best player at the, at the world championships. Um, but if you look at the Greeks and if you look at the Italians, if you look at the Spanish right now, uh, they're really making a difference because they're playing a very smart game. You know, where some of the other teams – you still are relying a lot. It doesn't mean that, guys, please, my goodness, it doesn't mean that the United States or is Hungary or is Serbia and Croatia are great teams, just like it doesn't mean on the women's side. Of course, we all know the United States, by the women's side, is by far the best team. But we also have to take a look at the growth of other teams. That's how you stay good. You stay good by seeing the growth of everybody. So what I'm seeing out there, if I had to sit over there as a coach and I have a young team, and as we know, in high school, college, and club, we don't always have, like, ten best athletes. Sometimes you might have two or three really good athletes, four or five okay, and then a couple kids are just starting. I would definitely look at what the Spanish, the Greeks, and the Italians are doing. I would definitely do that. Well, if you have a team that has, you know, six guys that are six foot seven, or, you know, you have a center that's six foot four and 200 pounds, and it goes up 46 and 100 free, yeah, you can probably play the same way as the Hungarians, the Serbs, and the Croatians do. But most of us don't have that. So you have to learn to, have, to use what you have. So, again, the idea is that when you are in a defense, this is what we started out. We're still talking about defense. When you are in a defense, this defense has to understand what do we go from here. That is my tradition. That's my transition. So here we go. So basically it doesn't matter. Let's say the shot comes from here. I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to put him all the way. Let's, let's reverse it from the other side. I'm going to take everything. You're not going to see it. But here's what we're going to do. That this guy that was over here, right, he's going to go all the way inside the two meters. This guy that was over here, he's going to go all the way over here in two meters. I'm going to open everything up. The guy that was in the middle, he's going to go all the way over here to the right because most of the time the center is on this side. So now what you basically have is a three-on-three three coming back with a nice big hole in the middle right here. So then let's say the center's coming in, but maybe this guy is beating his man. He's coming off. He's beating his man. He's going to drive it through. Then all of a sudden this guy is going to switch because let's say the ball may be here or maybe here someplace. That's usually where it is. Most teams throw the ball to the right side, and the reason for that is that there's not as many left handers. okay? That's all. It's not because they're bad guys. All right. Um, okay, hold on. Let's see the question. Uh, okay, good. All right. So, so based on over here, you know, so he's basically come here. Then all of a sudden, there's the open man. But remember, what about this guy? You got to be careful. Because if this guy passes the ball and he takes a shot, this guy is one of nobody. That is what you saw the Italians.